Well, good morning. Good to see you here at Hardison Baptist Church this morning. Take your hymn books sitting right there in front of you and turn to uh, number 57. If you're in the back row, they're under your seat on the chairs. Number 57, Be Thou Exalted. Be Thou Exalted forever and ever. God of eternity, the ancient of days, wondrous in wisdom, majestic in glory, perfect in holiness, and worthy of praise. Be thou exalted by seraphs and angels, be thou exalted with harp and with song saints in their anthems of rapture adore thee thine be the glory forever amen all right everybody got the tune <laughs> could sing me a solo on that one so uh and it may be it may be just a hair different from what we're used to in the the older hymn book maybe sometimes i think Maybe it is, but either way, y'all know how it goes. So now you got the tune in your head, sing together on the second. Be thou exalted, O Son of the Highest, Savior of sinful men, Redeemer and King, One with the Father, co-equal in glory, Humbly we come to Thee, our homage we bring. Be Thou exalted by seraphs and angels. Be Thou exalted with harp and with song. Saints in their anthems of rapture adore Thee. Thine be the glory forever. Be thou exalted, O Spirit of power, dwelling within our hearts to keep us from sin. God of the ages and Lord of salvation, ruler of heaven and earth, thy praises we sing. Be thou exalted by seraphs and angels, be thou exalted with harp and with song. Saints in their anthems of rapture adore thee. Thine be the glory forever. Amen. All right, turn over to 377. 377, when you find your spot, stand with me and we'll sing Faith is the victory first and third verses along the hills of light ye christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies against the foe and veils below let all our strength be hurled faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world faith is the victory faith is the victory oh glorious victory that overcomes the world to him who overcomes the foe white raiment shall be given before the angels he shall know his name confessed in hell then onward from the hills of light our hearts with love aflame will vanquish all the host of night in jesus concrete name faith is the victory faith is the victory oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. All right, let's, that was it, sorry, just, just to, <laughs> let's have, have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be together. We thank you for the songs that we can sing, and Lord, just as we get to worship you in that way, 
Help our hearts to be in tune with you and what your spirit has for us. And just thank you for this time we could be together. We just pray your blessing on uh, the time we have. And we pray for those that couldn't be with us. You just be with them in a special way and bring them back to us soon. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. A couple of uh, announcements you have there in your bulletin. Um, This Saturday, a week from yesterday, the ladies' outing at uh, Cracker Barrel in Warner Robins at 6 o'clock. So you're welcome to meet there at 6, or if you'd like to ride the van, the van will be leaving here about 5.30. I believe my wife will be driving that. So um, so 5.30 from here, or meet at Cracker Barrel in Warner Robins at 6 for you ladies. And I hope you enjoy that next Saturday evening. I think she was asking, too, if you could just let Miss Kathy Adams know with the church number during between 9 and 1, Monday through Thursday. Just let her know if you're going to go, or you can text my wife and let her know just so they kind of have an idea of how many is going to be there, what they're expecting, and so forth. Uh, okay, so she says if she doesn't answer, just leave a message. So because uh, then you can call at any time, and she can get it the next day. Okay. Um, August 28th is the Camo Men's Conference. That's the Calling All Men Out Men's Conference in Dublin from 10 to 3. Uh, it says you need to RS, we need to RSVP by the 22nd, but you have to call. Uh, there's no place on the website. Miss Kathy checked for us, and there's, they don't have that registration spot on the website. So we need to call that number there that's in your bulletin, guys, and let them know that uh, you are interested and you would like to come. And they can just, I think they need that just so they can make sure they have enough food set aside and, and uh, stuff like that. So um, RSVP by the 22nd. We will leave here on the 28th about 8.30 a.m., uh, most likely taking the church van over to Dublin, be back here probably around 4.30 or 5 Saturday afternoon. So guys plan for that. And then uh, Labor Day is right around the corner. It's hard to believe that the summer has gone by. Kids are back in school. It's hard to believe, isn't it, Stephanie? She says, no, it's not hard to believe at all. So, but uh, birthday wishes, uh, Ernie Kale's birthday is today. So if you would give him a call or shoot Miss Denise a text or a call, she can let him know that or he, he, she can hand her phone to him, let him know you wish him a happy birthday. I know he would appreciate that. Think about how you feel when somebody wishes you a happy birthday or happy anniversary. It makes you feel great. So uh, let them know you're, you're thinking of them. Bill and Sandra Barber. Uh, anniversary on the 18th. Let them know you, you wish them a happy anniversary as well. So, um, And then you see other things in our bulletin. If you have any uh, questions about things, you can see myself or Miss Kathy, and uh, we can try to answer those things about upcoming events and whatnot. Um, so take your hymn books again. Turn to 458. This song kind of goes back to the Philippians we've been looking into. Uh, For me to live as Christ, it was out of verse 21 out of Philippians chapter 1, but let's sing together uh, both pages there uh, for me to live as Christ. Four. Sorry, I'm ready now. <laughs> for me to live is Christ to die his gain, to know his word and walk his narrow way. There is no peace, no joy, no thrill Like walking in His will For me to live Is Christ to die is gain Once my... Oh, you changed, you get key changed, didn't you? See how these music notes... Okay, thank you. <laughs> Once my heart was full of sin and shame Someone told me Jesus came to save. When he said, come unto me, he set my poor heart free for me to live. Is Christ to die is gain. There are things that I still do not know. But of this one thing I'm completely sure. That he called me day, washed all my sins away for me to live. Is Christ to die is gain. So if you guys think it sounds funny, just watch it back on Facebook or YouTube and you'll be like, man, 
because all you'll hear is me on there. So uh, those that are watching, I apologize. You're listening, and you're probably like turning your volume down. I don't blame you. But uh, all right, let's move on to the next one, 506. When you find your spot there, stand with me as we'll sing our last congregational of the morning. 506. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to Thee. I need Thee every hour. Stay Thou nearby. Temptations lose their power when Thou art nigh. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee. Every hour I need Thee. My Savior, I come to Thee. I need Thee every hour, most holy one. Oh, make me Thine indeed, Thou blessed Son. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee. Every hour I My Savior, I come to Thee. Amen. You may be seated. And that song sums it up, doesn't it? We need Him every hour. Uh, when we think we're self-sufficient and got it, got it taken care of ourselves is when things start going awry, when we feel like we don't need His help. Take your Bibles, turn to Philippians Chapter 2. And while you're turning there, uh, I just want to say rem the reminder that uh, the treasure chest is in the back. If you want to uh, give your offering and tithe uh, with a check or whatnot, you can put it in the treasure chest. It gets emptied out every Sunday after the service. Or you can also give online at hardisonbaptist.org. And uh, whichever way we'll... At some point, I'm sure we'll get back to where we pass an offering plate, but we're just not there yet for a couple different reasons, and we'll just keep going in the way we're going. Hope it doesn't deter anyone from giving, not having that plate passed, but it's an encouragement when you do. As uh, so that's that part of the uh, got to keep things going. So you know we got bills to pay and things to do, and and it costs money for ministry. Brother Odom used to say that a lot, and uh, so it's definitely not not wrong there. So Philippians chapter 2, we've been uh, seeing how Paul has been uh, here in prison and he's writing to the church at Philippi of how, uh, how God's still in control, even though things are not looking the greatest for his circumstances, but he says, you know, that God's in control and things are getting done and, and he's being glorified. And he's Picks up here in verse in chapter two. We'll read the first four verses and look at those today. The Bible says, "If there if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other." better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to gather around your word, specifically here in Philippians chapter 2 this morning. I pray that you would just steal our minds and our hearts, help us to be able to hear from the Holy Spirit this morning, that we would uh, just know that he's speaking to us, and that we would allow him to work in our heart and our life. Lord, just thank you for your word. Thank you for preserving it for all these years so that we could study it even this morning. 
And Lord, just thank you that it's it's perfect. It's there's there's no errors, there's no contradictions in the Word of God, and we're thankful for that. Lord, I just pray that as we gather together and worship, uh, you're in and looking at your Word this morning, that you would just guide our hearts and minds and allow us to pay attention to grow closer to you because of it. And we ask it all in Christ's name, Amen. So here in Philippians chapter two. Um, my Bible has these little uh, notes, little topics or whatever, and the, it says that uh, we're starting out uh, joy in serving. You know, serving the Lord is supposed to be joyous. Uh, sometimes it can get, it can be heavy, it can be hard to keep doing the things that we're doing, but we're supposed to find the joy in it. We're supposed to know that by serving the Lord, we should be joyous. Now he starts off here in verse one. He says, "If there, there if there be, therefore." any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill you my joy. So he starts off here and he says that it's like four kind of rhetorical questions that Paul's asking here. He says, start off, it says, if there's any consolation in Christ, any type of consolation, and he, it's the answer to, by the way, the answer to all these questions he's asking is a resounding yes. So keep that in mind while we're reading through this and studying this for a moment. But any com- consolation in Christ, any comfort in Christ. You know, in Luke chapter 2, verse 25, Jesus is called the consolation of Israel. And then in 2 Corinthians 1 5, it says that our consolation abounds by Christ. So great verses that just show us that, yes, there's consolation in Christ, but then listen to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. You know what? I wrote down the wrong verses and even put them in the wrong notes there, so let me flip over. Hey, that's okay. You know, makes it so verses 16 and 17, I'm sorry. It says, Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work, word and work. So he says that he is the consolation. He says he gives us everlasting comfort. So the, first, the answer, the obvious answer to that first question says in, in verse 1, if there is any consolation in Christ... The answer is, yes, there is. We should all, I think we all have to some degree enjoyed the consolation of Christ, the comfort of Christ. If you've been through a tough time, uh, maybe it's a sickness or something with a, a, a family member or a job or, or just a difficult time in general or losing of a loved one, we've enjoyed and experienced the consolation of Christ. He says, if there's any, con- I'm going I'm to skip around in here just a little bit and just answer this question. It's, if there's any comfort in Christ, the next part, the first part of verse 2 says, fulfill ye my joy. So if there's any comfort in Christ, fulfill ye my joy. Humor me and do what it, do what it takes to serve God together. All right, in the second part of verse 1, he says, if any comfort of love. You know, the comfort of love is... Look at, uh, listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. You know, it's not just comfort, it's the comfort of His love. The comfort of love. And the answer to that is, yes, there is. It's another rhetorical question. But let me read it like this. If any comfort of love then fulfill you my joy. And then we'll go on into verse 2 and 3 and 4 in a moment. But these are, these are the things he's saying. If, these, if, 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 and, if, and I've already told you, the answer to each if is yes. Of course there is. And then we'll look at verses 2, 3, and 4 in a moment. And then he says in, uh, if any, in verse 1, if any fellowship of the Spirit. He says there's fellowship in the Spirit. Listen to... 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. Fellowship of the Spirit. When we get together, and a great example is here at church. Now, of course, that doesn't, that's not the only time that we can have fellowship. It shouldn't be the only time we have fellowship. But here it says, 
Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. We should be lifting each other up. That's part of the fellowship in the Spirit, is we should be encouraging one another. Let me just ask this, just for a second. How many of you are, at this moment, kind of going through just something in your life that's just like, this it's kind of rough for me. How many of you? Let me see. So about half, maybe a tiny bit over half of the church raised their hand. And maybe some of you didn't raise your hand because you're Baptist and you don't know how to get it up. I don't know. <laughs> I can't raise my hand at church. <laughs> or maybe you just, you know, you just didn't want to say, or maybe things are okay right now. And that's okay too. Uh, remember, you, I, I, I allude to this a lot. Remember, Brother Odom used to say, "If you're not in a trial or just coming out of one, you're fixing to go into one." And it just seems to be the the natural role of life. It's just how it happens. Well, if you're going through something, then we can be we can edify each other, and even if we're the ones in the midst of it, we can still edify somebody else. We'll look at it in just a minute. Talk, he talks about how we're not supposed to be so focused on our own stuff, because if when we are we're not doing this, the fellowship of the Spirit. When we're so focused on me and on whatever my problems are or my anxieties or, or whatever it fill in the blank that focuses on me, then I'm not focused on other people. If I'm not focused on other people, then the fellowship is not very sweet. So those of you that have tight friendships with somebody or a marriage relationship, if you think about this for just a second, if you are, think of a time that you were or are very focused on you. Okay, you thinking about that? You got it? When we're focused on us, how does that fellowship with that other person go? I'm talking about for long periods of time. It doesn't go very well, does it? Uh, it, it gets draining to the other person when it's all about our problems, our headaches, our troubles, our me, 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 me. And we're not glorifying, we're not lifting up somebody else. We're definitely not glorifying the Lord. So we have to be careful. The fellowship of the Spirit that we're building each other up. Not so focused on ourselves. We'll get to the focus on ourselves in a second because Paul, Paul touches on it for sure. Another verse. Hebrews 10.25, it's a, it's a familiar verse, but I want to look at a different part of this, our, our, our focus on a different part of this verse that we're familiar with. Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. What day is that? The day of the Lord. Every, you, know, you know, I believe, uh, I had a teacher in college that said, uh, I know when, I can tell you when the Lord's coming back. And we were all like, I came to Bible college, and they knew. I'm going to find out right now. We all lean forward in our, chair, in our chair, and he said, we're one day closer today than we were yesterday. <laughs> like, man, I was ready to... Anyway, so, but listen to this. <clears throat> Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. That's fellowship of the Spirit. We should not forsake being together. We use this verse a lot to, to talk about coming to church like we're doing right now, and that's good. But this isn't it, guys. This isn't all there is to the Christian life is in these four walls and being together in these blue, blue padded pews. This is just where we come like in the huddle, and we hear the play, and we're supposed to go out and do it. We should, we should be focused on being together, our fellowship together, not just here at church, but just together, period. He says, look at what it says there, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, exhorting, lifting up one another. Now, I've seen that very well here with my dad in the hospital. My mom's been up there for the whole three weeks he's been in the hospital, almost three weeks. I've seen that. Not, no offense, but not just from you guys. It's been from outside of these four walls. It's, it's been a blessing to see people that want to exhort. They want to help. They want to come together. Spirit of unity is awesome. And that's what we should be doing. It says, <clears throat> not forsaking the assembling, of ourselves, the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, 
but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day of prayer. As we get closer and closer to the, that means we should, we should strive to be together in fellowship more today than we did yesterday. And tomorrow we should strive to be more tomorrow than today. We should be constantly trying to be <clears throat> more focused on the, the spirit of fellowship. Proverbs 27, 17. Love this verse. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. That takes fellowship. Has there been a time in your life that you've not had that any type of fellowship? Last year would have been a, a very a very good example with COVID and all the restrictions and and you know I really don't like <clears throat> this is me personally. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here we go. I, I really don't like the. <clears throat> the social distancing. I don't like that phrase. We should social distance. All right, why should we? Seriously. Because it keeps, you know, people like me that spray when we talk, you know. <laughs> but don't sit in the front. I'm just kidding. But, well, if you did, I'd probably not get so close. <clears throat> but it's, as we separate ourselves, it allows the germs a chance not to go between one another. I really think it shouldn't be, this is my opinion, that it shouldn't be called social distancing, it should be called physical distancing. Because that's what we need. We don't need social distancing. Some of us experienced that last year where we were just cut off. And <clears throat> had it not been for uh, internet usage or telephone usage or something, we would have really been cut off from other people and we need that social interaction. We need to keep sick. You know this church up here uh, 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 on 42? They had that sign up there for a while that said, uh, "Be six feet, be, be near to God, but six feet from all others." You know, <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. You know, we need that social interaction. We need that togetherness. We need the fellowship. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. And what that means too is sometimes when you're rubbing, <clears throat> sharpening, you might. I would say guys, but maybe ladies in here too. You ever sharpen a knife? I'm sure ladies have you get in the kitchen, you want to sharpen that knife so it'll cut through the chicken good, you know? Or, or squash, whatever one you want, whatever you're cutting. But you sharpen that. What, are you, what is that blade doing? What's going on when you're sharpening a knife? If you were to look at it and get down the nitty gritty, it's two hard things rubbing against each other. The, the harder thing is going to sharpen the softer thing so that it works better, right? Well, would that be like abrading it? Would it be like doing something to it? If you were to ask the knife, let's just go the Disney route for a second here, ask the knife if it liked the fact that it's fixing to get parts of it shaved off on this thing because it's harder than it is, would it like that? No. Iron sharpens iron. Sometimes... We as friends to our other friends have to say stuff or do stuff that they don't like. Parents, <laughs> we're well versed in this. You know, if we if we did everything our children wanted us to do, then what do they grow up to be like? Let me cover up the mic. For a <laughs> I heard the word spoiled. Y'all y'all ever seen a a spoiled adult? Oh, we got ooh, a little bit big ooh, in here, you know, and that they're, they're tough to deal with, aren't they? I've told you this many times. I'll, it just fits the situation, so I'll say it again. I got to my my parents were pretty pretty strong with me, pretty tough with me when I was growing up. Um, usually, the, my brothers say me being the third of three children that I they were a lot more lax on me than they were on my other two brothers, and <clears throat> they're they're probably right. But uh, you know, the fact is. When I got to college, I think I told you this before, I was on a hall with 80 other guys. And some of those didn't have strict parents. And they were brats, some of them. So I sat down and I wrote my parents a thank you note. Thank you for being tough on me. Thank you for disciplining me. Thank you for having rules and guidelines and those things. Things that now that I'm a parent, I don't like doing that, but I know I have to. Or else, my children are going to be those ones that grow up that nobody wants to be around. Iron sharpeneth iron. That's part of the fellowship. 
Acts 2.42, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. One thing I just want to point out about this one is we have fellowship one with another. We haven't done it as much lately, just with things going on with COVID and whatnot, but what do we, what do, we do when we gather over here in the fellowship hall after a service and we have a bunch of food on the tables? What are we doing? We're eating and we're fellowshipping. Here is a test of whether you have broken fellowship with somebody or somebody has broken fellowship with you. If we can't sit down and eat with that person, then the fellowship's broken. Think about that. And that's not what glorifies the Lord. He doesn't want us to have broken fellowship because we need that fellowship. We need to be able to encourage one another to lift up one another, to edify one another. So the rhetorical answer to that question, if there's, if any fellowship in the Spirit is yes, then fulfill you my joy. And then the last one out of verse 1, if any bowels and mercies. Another way this can be read is if, if, if there's any affection and compassion. Listen to John 13 verse 34 and 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. We're supposed to love others. It's pretty easy when things are going well. It's pretty easy when we stay in our little groups, our little cliques, our little circles. But it gets a little more difficult when we watch too much of the news. Yeah. Oh, I got real quiet. People are like, mm, moving on, right? You know, we watch the news and we get angry with people. We get, we get frustrated with people. You know what those people have in common with us? Created in His image. Anywhere on this planet, when you see a human being, they were created in His image. And they need Christ just like we do. This command, He says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Listen to 1 John 4, 19-21. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this, is, and this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. You know, these things are, these are the things, these are the iron sharpened as iron that we don't like. I don't like it. But it's, it's part of the Bible. It's, it's, it's just where this passage of Scripture is going. And it says that we love Him because He first loved us. We've quoted that verse a lot. You've heard it a lot. But the next verse is the one that gets a little, little rough. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he's a liar. We're commanded to love one another. It's part of the fellowship that we have to have. We have to have it. And we also have to have the, the bowels and mercies, the affections and the compassion. So in so these verses, this verse 1, he has these, these questions that ask, and all of them are a resounding yes. In verse 2 it says, Fulfill ye my joy. And this is what would fulfill his joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. It's kind of neat how Paul is doing this right here. The first verse we saw, he, has, uh, he takes the four things that are rhetorical questions. Verse 2, he has four things that he says that are the same thing. Think about this with me. Verse 2, he says, these are the same thing. He says, 
fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, and of one mind. They all mean the same thing. That we be united. We be united in, in one spirit. Through Jesus Christ. That we be together. He says, that's what will fulfill my joy. He's talking, now he's talking to the church at Philippi, but obviously it's included in Scripture for us. And so we can see this, that he wants us to be, and he's urging us here to be of one mind, to be of one accord, to be thinking like-mindedly. Now, here's the fun part of that. We're all, we're all different, right? Well, I hope so, because that's what makes this world interesting. That's what makes friendships and marriages work, is we're all different. Being all different, how can we be all different? like-minded and the same when it comes to doing things for Christ. How can we do that? By surrendering our will to Him. By surrendering what does He want us to do by doing verses 3 and 4. We'll read it real quick and then we'll go back and look at it. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. That's how we have the spirit of unity. I, saw, I said it earlier in the, in the message, was we're not so focused on ourselves. Now, let me just give a little side note preface. I am not preaching at or to anybody. This is just where we're at in Philippians, and it's just the, it's good stuff. And this is what God has for us. And he says that we need to be like-minded. And to do that, we have to not be focused on ourselves. It's hard to do. It's easy to preach it. It's easy to listen, and it's easy to go, yeah, that's right. But it's hard to do sometimes when we get in the midst of it, and we go, oh boy, now we've got to really unite together. God's called us to be of one mind and one accord like-minded. So, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. There's nothing wrong with ambition. But when it becomes selfish ambition or conceitedness, that's when it's not of the Lord. That's when it's not accomplishing the purpose that the Lord has for it. See what the selfish ambition or the strife, or the, the, the uh, selfish ambition means out of a desire for our own advancement or promotion. If we're doing something for that purpose, then it's the wrong motive. Have you ever heard of, maybe you've been in corporate America long enough or were in corporate America or some type, that there, there's, there's almost seems like there's one person that that's kind of what fits their bill. Is they are all about promoting themselves so that they can make it to the top. You ever heard the, the people say that, you know, it doesn't matter who you step on to get to the top, but you got to step on somebody. That's not, that's not the, the mind that Paul's talking about here. We don't do it out of strife or vainglory. We don't do it for our own to build ourselves up. I, I, was, I forget who, who was I talking to. It's been a little while, but they were talking about they went to a job interview or something. Uh, how, I forget exactly how it went, but they said that they wanted, the people that were asking the questions wanted to know, basically wanted them to build themselves up. And it was kind of foreign to this person. I, I forget who it was and all the, the details, but they said, you know, it was hard for me to, Sit there and just puff myself up to just make it out to be just this, you know, oh, I did this and I did that. Some people that comes a little more naturally to, but this person, they were just like, you know, it's hard for me to just sit there and say how great I was. Well, that's what they wanted to hear, you know, as far as why should we hire you kind of thing. But that, that mentality is we're thinking of others. We're not doing it for, for strife. Or for, we're not doing it for our own ambitions, our own building up. And then for uh, when it says out of vain glory or thinking of uh, oneself, thinking of oneself too highly. 
We're like conceit. You ever heard somebody say, oh, he's so conceited. You know, that, I remember that big time in school, you know, somebody's conceited. When it comes to sports or, or, or they get the grade, the best, the highest grade in class every year, you know, well, eventually it's the temptation is to be conceited, you know. Well, I got the highest grade. I did the best in this class. I was the, the fill in the blank on the sports team. And that's conceit. It's not what glorifies the Lord. And that's what we should not be working towards or working through. That shouldn't be our motivation. In verse 3 it says, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Listen to what an example our own Savior was. Now, we're not going to get into this passage of Scripture, scripture today, but it's what rolls right next out of the, out of the Scripture. Listen to, or you can look with me, you're in the same spot. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 9. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You know, what an example Christ is for us. That, that he, who is God, set all that aside. And said, this is not about me. This is about my people. This is about those that I love. And what an example. And Lord willing, we'll look at that next week. We'll get more into that. But what, an, what a great testimony. What a great, it, it's something to aspire to. And in verse 4, it says, Look not every man on, the things, on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. We're supposed to be focused on other people. If we stay focused on other people, then it, it gets the focus off of us. It makes us to where we're not doing those things for, for strife or vainglory, for our own ambition. We have to be very careful because our natural uh, pull is to be all about me. I was speaking with a guy... Uh, one of the Herbster brothers at the Wild several years ago, probably 10 years ago, and was asking him, uh, I had a teen at the time that was struggling with depression. And I said, hey, you know, I've got this teen that struggles with depression, and I just, you know, wonder how can I help this teenager? And so he went off and just started off on this, I thought, thought it was a tangent. It just, I'm just like, I don't, I don't think he heard my question. You know, he just, four or five minutes off on this one subject, and I'm going, okay, I don't, I don't think... I'm not sure what he heard, but, uh, but you know, I was, I was asking because I wanted to be able to help this team, but I, at the time, was struggling with depression as well. And it's just very frustrating to, to struggle with that. Uh, if, you've, if you have struggled with it, you know that it's just, it can be this dark cloud that just follows you. You know that kid on uh, Peanuts, you know? You know, he's just, he, he, the one with the dirty cloud? Well, I'm thinking of the one with the cloud above him where the rain comes down on him everywhere he goes, you know? Or is that Eeyore? I don't remember, but either way, you know, we've got this idea that this just these bad things just follow us, and it just always happens to us. And so as, as uh, Brother Herbster was, was going into this stuff, he said, uh, you know, when, when people are struggling with depression, this was a gist of what he said. They're focused on themselves. And I'm listening to that because, again, I'm struggling with depression myself, but I, didn't, I wasn't letting that on. And I really did have a teenager that was struggling with it. I wanted to be able to help this teen appropriately and properly. And he says, you know, they're, they're, when, you're, when someone's struggling with depression, from a spiritual standpoint, they're just too focused on themselves. Well, I didn't like that answer. Yeah, you know, I really didn't. Uh, so the, the rest of the day, I kind of thought over all the verses he said and the things he said. And the more I would pull out this time I was really depressed or aggravated, and I'd go, and I'd, I'd run the scene back through my head, and I'd say, huh, I was focused on me. 
uh, that one's just weird. So we'll pull this one out. How about this one? We'll run it back through, and I'll play it through, and i go, I can't. Both of these, I was focused on me and what I wanted and what I needed and what, what I felt. Me, 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 me. You know, it says, but let others, verse 4 says, let others esteem, let us esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things. We get so caught up into that, that we're so caught up into what we're wanting to do, what we're seeing, what we're focused on, on me. You know, I keep alluding to it, or to him. Uh, Brother Odom used to say, it's so funny, I didn't like it when he said this either. Uh, because I didn't understand the concept of depression. He said, you know, if somebody's struggling with depression, I'd tell them, go do something for somebody else. Go cut their grass or bake a pie or just do something for somebody else. Well, I don't want to. <laughs> this is about me, you know. See the problem? There's the problem. We've got ourselves at the forefront of everything. And we're going, but, but what about me? Well, what about what about me? Let not look not every man on his own things, but every man on also on the things of others. If we'll focus on other people, we'll focus on others' needs. It'll help us not to do things for the wrong reason. It'll help us to be more united. It'll help us to be moving forward in the right direction as one, in one accord. He said earlier. And scripture just backs us up and, and encourages us. I want to read you some footnotes. Well, let me read you this passage of Scripture first. John 13, verses 4 and 5. says, We're, we're, we're at the Last Supper. It says, He, Jesus, riseth from supper and laid aside His garments and took a towel and girded Himself. And after, he hath pour, and after that, He poureth water into a basin and He began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a the towel wherewith he was girded. Wow. What an example. They came in to eat. The custom of the day was usually there was somebody at the door, whether it was a, a, like, a, like a servant type slave or helper person, or it was a person of the house. That would, as you came in, they would wash your feet. Because why? Because in those days they wore sandals. Their feet were dirty. They were stinky. And they didn't want to recline at the table with dirty feet. Well, the disciples, remember Jesus said, hey, go find me. He asked two of them, go find us a room and we're going to gather together. So they go to the upper room. They gather together and they're going to have the, what we know as the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper. They gather together. They start doing their communing, their fellowshipping. And then, but apparently, no one washed anybody's feet. Nobody offered the bowl of water. Nobody got the towel out. And of all people, what an example for us. But boy, could you imagine being in that room that night? The Messiah. God Himself gets up. And you're just talking, you're like, oh, I wonder where He's going. And you're just chit-chatting, maybe you're talking about the football game from yesterday or something. You're just having a good time. And you see, puts a towel, hangs it down here, and they're like, by this time, football talk's over. And they're going, what's he doing? Is he, is he doing what I think he's doing? Why is he pouring water in the bowl? Oh, no. I told you we should have done that. Get up and get it real quick. No, 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 no. I'm not taking it from him. You take it from him. I'm not getting it. I won't wash his stinky feet. You see Matthew's feet? Oof. You get that toe that looks like this. I ain't touching that foot. And Jesus began to wash their feet. What an example. We put others first. Let me read you this this footnote I got. I found some commentary notes. Esteems others better than themselves. I'm going back a verse. I know this rebukes much of the culture's concept of self-esteem. The Bible knows nothing of the idea that we should and must carry with us an attitude of confident superiority in every situation and knows nothing of the idea that this is the foundation for a healthy human personality. While we recognize the intrinsic value of every human life, we can't deny that the low self-esteem 
of some is justified and based in reality. When we are in rebellion against God, it is fitting for us to have a low self-esteem. But listen to this, as we esteem others better, we will naturally have a concern for their needs and concerns. This sort of outward-looking mentality naturally leads us to a unity among the people of God. If I consider you above me and you consider me above you, then a marvelous thing happens. We have a community where everyone is looked up to and no one is looked down on. If we're constantly aware of this and we're putting your, I'm put your needs above mine and you put everybody else's needs above yours, what a, what a spirit of unity it gives the body of Christ. You know, and Jesus being that perfect example the perfect opportunity to look and to have that what what should we do how should we how should we serve when we put others first it creates a spirit of unity but as long as we're focused on ourselves the unity dissolves we have to do that it's difficult but we have to do that we have to work at keeping the spirit of unity amongst the body of Christ. The world won't understand it. The world laughs at it because it's the opposite of what the world says to do. But we know that our Lord and Savior was the example of this and putting others first, looking at others' needs and putting ours to the side. You got to still take care of yourself. That's not y'all aren't don't read into that further than I'm saying, but it's that part of we've got to put others first. We go through we each uh, like I said over half the hands raised earlier. We're just we're going through something, you know, and you're not alone. We should be lifting each other up, encouraging one another, and helping each other in whatever way we can. And when we do that, the Lord is glorified. And Paul says, you fulfill my joy. You fulfill what, I, what, what pleases me, and I believe what pleases, in this situation, what pleases Paul, pleases Christ, when we're like-minded. How about you? Are you of a like mind this morning? Are you focused on your own stuff, or are you able to focus on somebody else and just say, you know what, others first. You know, the, the, word, the word joy, you know, you put the acrostic, uh, Jesus, others, and then yourself. That's how we can have true joy. And that's what this chapter is talking about, joy and serving. This whole book is focused on, on joy. We put Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. I will say this, it's been very encouraging. A lot of you have, have went at the back doors have stopped and, and, and said, hey, anything I can do to help here at church, let me know. And, and many of you have talked to me, Kathy, or Brandy, or whomever, and you've just said that, and that's been a blessing, that's been an encouragement. That's the spirit of unity that we need to have, and we're excited for that. But we need to focus and work hard at keeping the spirit of unity, because Satan loves to get in and just shake things up a little bit, and cause us just to get focused on ourselves. And when we do that, we know that he's getting a foothold. What are we focused on this morning? What's our, do we have that spirit of unity? Do we have that mindset of doing things in a way that glorifies Him? I trust you'll allow the Lord to work in your heart. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to hear from your word this morning, to respond. Lord, I pray that as we have been challenged and encouraged from your word, that I, I pray that we would respond to it. Help our hearts to be open to what you have for us, that we would make sure that we're focusing not on ourselves, but on others, that we're putting others above our own needs. And Lord, that we would just move together in a mighty way in the spirit of unity. Lord, we love you. We do thank you for the great example you are, you are and were for us. Help us to respond in a way that glorifies you, that lifts each other up, and that 
just makes this church, <clears throat> the Hardison Baptist Church and the Body of Christ Church, better because of these, these, this challenge, this encouragement we've had this morning. We love you, Lord, and we thank you, and we ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Stand with me if you would while Miss Donna <clears throat> plays the piano. I want to give you opportunity.